hopefully sooner rather than later. I think uh, New Hampshire DOT was kind of waiting for some of this reauthorization information to shake out, and we're still kind of up in the air about what the funding levels are going to be. Um, so they're not quite sure how much they can dedicate to rail. Um, <coughs> but I will let everybody know when the when the public hearings are, and probably be a pretty interesting time to get your word in about uh, the state's rail plan. All right, so, um, I'm going to change the subject to water. I realize we're a policy committee here, and uh, although we're driven by transportation because there's money there, water is not uh, off the uh, table. Great Bay, as we all know, is suffering degradation. One of the culprits is nutrient pollution. Nutrient pollution is coming back to the communities in two forms. One wastewater treatment plant licensing, the other is on point source contribution. Data to date says two thirds of the problem is non point source. One of the initiatives was to try and understand for the high watershed communities what their options were to, in fact, control this uh, condition. A small group of us were invited to the Nadnock paper to meet with Commissioner. <coughs> Kurt Spaulding, the number one dog down at EPA Region 1, to discuss issues of New Hampshire uh, environmental concerns and where the EPA, in fact, stood on these issues. And I won't go into the business of air, which, of course, everybody's getting beat up on, but rather uh, talk to the water uh, question, particularly this nutrient issue. Several in the group preceded myself uh, bringing up and asking questions related to this, but mine was very direct to the commissioner. We've initiated in Barrington a, a program to deal with nutrient uh, pollution runoff at the development level as a result of what EPA has put in place under the residual authority at both the Charles River and up in South Portland, Maine, to not look at questions at the regional level, watershed level, or even the municipal level, but rather at the development level. And EPA has successfully put in control programs at as low a uh, <coughs> acreage as one acre, and, and that has survived court tests. What's important here for Barrington is we're under continued development pressure. People are uh, continuing to carve up the landscape and uh, meet just the minimum requirements for uh, zoning and subdivision. And they don't necessarily uh, relate to good uh, runoff uh, design. With the help of DES handling money and sampling, we've got a development now under uh, evaluation from the outset. For this, this condition, we're also working on a, uh, an issue with another development that uh, is shown to have a 259% increase in phosphorus runoff as a result of their uh, drainage design. 250 million? No, 259% over, over the baseline. What was asked of the commissioner is, given what we've all heard about air, is EPA going to continue to completely support this, this concept of uh, uh, developmental level of controls on, on nutrient runoff? And the answer was an emphatic yes. I provided this information back to the Barrington Selectman in writing because it's critical that <laughs> certainly if we're going to spend time and effort we don't want to have the federal government all of a sudden pull a rug out from underneath us in, with respect to the Clean Water Act. So I pass that on to you that uh, this is an initiative that uh, makes sense. The commissioner says it makes sense. You obviously don't want to aggravate the situation. And you certainly don't want your new developments to, to not uh, be responsible to the uh, requirements of the Clean Water Act. So. I'll keep you posted. This is going to be a long-term deal. This is going to be solved in the next few months or perhaps in a year's time. But uh, 
this this is this is a one of the available answers and it certainly makes sense for those communities that are going through growth such as a parent thank you um, I have a couple of issues, uh, a couple of questions, but I, I do want to just provide um, some thoughts uh, in response to those comments. Um, I, one of the really important um, facts that was mentioned to begin with was that the best estimates at this point in time is about two-thirds of the problem comes from non-point source pollution issues and one-third comes from water treatment facility um, uh, situations and uh, or, or wastewater treatment facility situations. and. Unfortunately, the, 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 the way the process appears to be moving along is to focus on very, very, very expensive upgrades to wastewater treatment facilities um, that will provide relatively small um, improvements from an impact standpoint. So one of the things we always wrestle with is to what extent um, should we be looking at our communities in their entirety and saying, how do we best share the burden of keeping our environment clean um, and supporting um, uh, how important the environment is in terms of uh, not only it's just it's just good to do that, but also from a tourist perspective and all the rest. Um, and so the focus on ways in which you can deal with these sorts of issues on a on a development by development basis um, certainly is a, is a way to say. The, Let's, let's focus, if we're going to, if the government's going to be involved in telling us what to do, let's at least make sure that we're focusing in the areas that have the, the greatest impact. And in many, many cases, um, some very um, easy decisions in the very, very beginning can make a huge difference further on down the line. It's like a course correction. You know, you, if you make your one degree course correction in the very beginning, it doesn't cost you anything, it's no big deal. But if you have to make a 50% course correction later on, it's very expensive, it's very complicated, a lot of opposition to it. So paying attention to where the problem starts as opposed to trying to fix it uh, later on, it makes a lot of sense. So thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Um, it would appear as though we have two um, uh, administrative modifications. One, one besides the paperwork here, one talking about, one has a date of November and the other December, but I don't think we took any action last month. In the November wasn't ready. Okay, do we need to take action at this meeting today in order to... You can do it now. It would be great to be able to submit those to at least the November 1 to DOT. Uh, well, we, we haven't, we found the agenda for the executive committee, we just haven't done those yet. Okay. But it, you're fine to go ahead now. It doesn't have to be done in the executive committee, it can be done here. Okay, I, I mean, I... But you, you frankly, all don't have the information, so... Well... I mean, we have the write-up. No, this only is? the executive. Oh, okay, okay. Then we'll do it the way we normally do. I was thinking we did it here, but I guess I'm no. been to too many meetings and I can't keep track right. of where I'm supposed to be going. <laughs> Sorry, something to do with age. <laughs> uh, probably have a lot to do with age. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, actually, my age. Any other business before we? That's what we have three here. So move. <laughs>